playing with fire. In a small dimly lit room with pale blue walls, Amelia Ross sat across from her court-appointed therapist, Dr. Lillian Foster. The sterile environment felt suffocating, yet it paled in comparison to the chaos swirling in Amelia's mind. The single window, like a forgotten hope, was too high to see through, and the flickering fluorescent light above only deepened the sense of isolation. Do you want to know what my mom used to say? Amelia asked, leaning forward. Dr. Foster, calm and composed as always, met her gaze. There was something about Dr. Foster that fascinated Amelia, her steady green eyes, the way her short auburn hair framed her face, and the way she never flinched, no matter what Amelia confessed. What did your mother say, Amelia? Dr. Foster replied in that smooth, soothing tone that Amelia found almost hypnotic. Amelia smirked, running her hand through her messy dark hair. She used to say, be careful, darling. One day you'll get burned. Dr. Foster's brow arched ever so slightly. Amelia watched her, noticing the subtle changes, the way her fingers shifted slightly in her lap. And did you? Dr. Foster asked softly. Amelia leaned back in her chair, tapping her foot. Depends on how you define burned, I guess. She paused, watching Dr. Foster carefully. I burned her, you know. My last girlfriend. Not literally, but you know what I mean. Dr. Foster didn't move, didn't even blink. You mean you hurt her? I mean, I took something from her. Amelia's fingers drummed on the table. She cheated. She lied to me. Talked to some other girl behind my back. So, I made sure she couldn't look at anyone else again. Dr. Foster remained unshaken. Her eyes. Amelia's lips curled into a wicked grin. Yep. Plucked them out. I didn't want her to see anyone but me. Silence stretched between them. Amelia studied Dr. Foster's face, searching for a sign of disgust or fear. But as always, Dr. Foster remained serene, unmovable, like a saint carved from marble. We had some good times though, Amelia said, her voice softening. There was this one night, we stole half a store's worth of junk ran through the streets laughing like maniacs. She always knew how to make me feel alive. What else did you do together? Dr. Foster asked, her tone unchanged. Amelia's eyes darkened with a glint of something dangerous. We had fun in ways you wouldn't understand. Her hand slid closer to Dr. Foster's on the table. Maybe you could though. Dr. Foster didn't pull her hand away. She stayed still, watching, waiting. Amelia leaned forward, her voice dropping to a whisper. We could play a game, you and me. You ever play truth or dare? We're not playing any games, Amelia. Dr. Foster's tone was firm, but not harsh. Come on, just for fun. Don't you like fun, Lillian? Amelia's fingers brushed lightly against Dr. Foster's. She was testing, pushing boundaries, and it thrilled her. I'm here to assess you for your trial, not to play games, Dr. Foster said quietly. But what if we did? Amelia's voice was like a purr. What if we stopped pretending and had a little fun? Never have I ever, that's a good one. Dr. Foster didn't answer. She simply watched, her eyes locked on Amelia's, not giving an inch. Amelia raised her hand. I'll go first. Never have I ever kissed another woman. To her surprise, Dr. Foster hesitated, then slowly lowered a finger. Amelia's breath caught. So, there was something under that cool exterior after all. Your turn, Amelia prompted, leaning in closer. Dr. Foster's eyes softened for just a moment before she spoke. Never have I ever hurt someone without regret. Amelia's fingers stayed up. Regrets for the weak. 
I do what I want because I can. Her voice was sharper now, her pulse quickening. Dr. Foster stood up, gathering her notebook. Our time's up for today. No, it's not. Amelia's hand shot out, grabbing Dr. Foster's wrist. The room seemed to freeze as the tension between them escalated. Dr. Foster looked down at Amelia's hand, her face impassive. Let go, Amelia. I know you felt something. I saw it. Amelia's grip tightened. I'm tired of pretending. Aren't you? Dr. Forster didn't respond. She pulled her wrist free, her movements calm, controlled. As Dr. Foster turned toward the door, Amelia's eyes flicked to the silver fountain pen that had fallen from the therapist's bag. Without thinking, Amelia slid it into her pocket. Please don't go, Amelia whispered, stepping closer to Dr. Foster. Her voice was pleading now, desperate. You're different. You're not like the others. Dr. Foster paused at the door but didn't turn around. This is over, Amelia. I won't be coming back. Amelia's heart raced, her mind spinning. Before Dr. Foster could react, Amelia moved, pulling the pen from her pocket and thrusting it into Dr. Foster's neck. The therapist's eyes widened in shock as blood sprayed across the room. Amelia watched, mesmerized, as Dr. Foster crumpled to the floor, her body twitching in its final moments. Amelia dropped to her knees, her fingers dipping into the pool of blood forming around Dr. Foster's lifeless body. She painted red flowers on the floor, humming softly to herself as the guards rushed in, dragging her away. As the world faded to black, Amelia smiled. She had finally played her game. Amelia's world dimmed as the sedative coursed through her veins. The last thing she saw before slipping into unconsciousness was the sea of red flowers she'd painted with Dr. Foster's blood. The metallic scent clung to her, intoxicating in its own way. She felt strangely calm, serene even, as the guard's rough hands dragged her from the room. But in the depths of her mind, the chaos continued to swirl. Darkness engulfed her, yet in that black void, Amelia was free. Free from the sterile walls, the oppressive fluorescent lights, the judgments and rules that tried to contain her. She dreamed of a vast field, flowers blooming as far as the eye could see, each petal dripping with blood. In the distance, Dr. Foster stood, her serene face now smiling, not with pity, but with understanding. Amelia walked toward her, reaching out, wanting to touch her again, to feel that electric connection. You always wanted this, Dr. Foster whispered in the dream, her lips brushing Amelia's ear. To break the rules, to burn everything down. Amelia smiled, a wild grin spreading across her face. And now I have. Just as their hands were about to touch, the dream cracked and shattered. Amelia's body jerked, and she blinked her eyes open, disoriented and groggy. The world felt duller, the brightness gone, but she quickly realized she was no longer in the therapy room. Padded walls surrounded her now, closing in on all sides. She sat up slowly, her arms bound in a tight straitjacket. A familiar heaviness pressed against her chest, solitary confinement. She tried to laugh, but the sound came out as a strangled chuckle. They think they can lock me away? Her voice was hoarse, but it still held that edge of defiance. They don't get it. I'm already free. Footsteps echoed from the hallway outside the thick metal door. She recognized the sound, the heavy boots of guards patrolling. They were watching her now, waiting for her to unravel further, to break under the weight of isolation. But Amelia thrived in the darkness. It was her playground. With a crooked smile, she whispered to the empty room, you can't kill what's already dead inside. The door to the padded room opened, and two guards stepped in, their faces blank mechanical in their duty. But Amelia's eyes were already alight with mischief, 
the fire in her mind burning brighter than ever. I'm ready for my next game, she muttered as they approached. Who's ready to play?